Now, why ask a guy from IMSA about low dollar, how to get into racing type stuff? And the reason is your family raced, yep. you, you were at the track when you were a kid. Yep. So today, let's talk a little bit more about how to get into racing. So let's start with corner working. Yeah. So have you ever worked a corner? Uh, many times, <laughs> uh, maybe younger than I was supposed to be out in the corner. Um, but, um, you know, right when I got to IMSA, I uh, asked Jim and Ed about a partnership with SCCA. Um, the reason being is I think it's incumbent on all of us, um, you, myself, and, and those watching, and any of us who are in the sport, to make sure that there is a pipeline to fill uh, the for next generation. For both drivers and for Absolutely. workers and Absolutely, and so I had an opportunity to meet with Mike Cobb and Eric Prill at the Rolex 24, and I said, guys, we gotta, we gotta build a partnership. We gotta, not just about drivers and, and classes and, and teams, but more about workers. How do we get people to come to the racetrack? And they've done a great job with things like track night in America and stuff like that to introduce people, but then, that whole idea of, you know, when I was a kid, corner workers, obviously the event couldn't happen without them and still can't. Um, you got the chance to go to the racetrack to be as close as anybody can get to the you racing be, surface. You can get to be impotent. And yes, <laughs> you, you know, and, and then you also play a role. And honestly, there is no better way to learn the sport or to get to see it. You don't even need to buy a ticket to be a corner worker. So I think that part is missing, um, that we, we need to communicate that more. And then there's some opportunities for us to train people with, with interactive online opportunities that we can train people in advance of getting to the racetrack to be a corner worker or nowadays. Timing and scoring, it's a lot more automated than it once was. I yeah, used to, still too I used to do uh, taping, which is, you know, try to write down as fast as you can all the numbers as they went by. You know, try doing uh, 100 Formula Vs or 100 Formula Fords at no, Road thanks. America, you know, uh, or lap charts. I mean, nowadays it's, it's the transponders and everything like that. But we as a, as a sport, I think, owe it to the history and to the future to be able to bring the next generation. So... Um, join SECA, join NASA, join Midwest Council, or several other organizations. Get out to a race. Um, if you're a car person with uh, any inkling of passion, you gotta you gotta do it that way, and you you can get up closer than anybody else can. So, IMSA races are largely staffed by SCCA corner workers. That's right. It's always been that That's way. That's right. And uh, so this whole idea that, that you're all against each other is, is BS. You're all working together. Yeah, I mean, we signed an agreement with SCCA to do uh, the next generation thing for training and, and getting people involved. And truly, 24 hours at Daytona, 12 hours at Sebring, 10 Pretty. hours at Petite. We need those people, and they work in shifts, and they help support our event. And uh, I love the fact that corner working is not – become automated you know there are some opportunities with future discussions yeah i don't want to race just, with automated no corner workers i uh, want real ones that yeah. know how to help me if yeah. i get in trouble yeah that <laughs> that light that might come on that's yellow yeah. <laughs> cannot see you know an incident and can't wave a flag so 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 how about joining a team or working on a team is that as easy as it sounds or well i think um you know, everybody knows somebody, right? Everybody knows somebody, um, but you talk about sweeping floors. I know a lot of people that have been in the sport for a long time walked into a race shop and said, I'm a car person. I'd like to be involved. I'll even sweep floors if I get the chance. And um, fortunately now there's motorsports education programs and a lot of universities that give people you know, actual degree training, yeah. uh, not just being an engineer, but, you know, motorsports specific uh, programs, which is great. Um, but I think getting out to the track, getting experience as a worker, you know, showing your name and your face uh, in and amongst the teams. Um, and, and again, got to start somewhere, even if it's sweeping floors or, or polishing wheels to show that you, you have the passion uh, come rain or shine, because you and I know, uh, no matter what the weather is, we're going to go racing. Yep. Um, and build your way up the ladder. Um, you're not immediately going to be a, a crew chief or a team manager, 
unless you got the, the experience. But how many crew chiefs started up? sweeping floors? That's nobody, nobody came into a race shop saying, I'm your crew chief. Hundred hundred percent. And that's it's just like any race driver. You got to start somewhere and, and get the seat time. Even if you're a crew chief or a mechanic, you need the seat time in that role. Yeah. All get. right. So let's talk about seat time driving. Uh, it's easier than ever to get on track between uh, 24 hours of lemons, uh, track night in America, you mentioned yeah. basically anybody with any car, as long as it's safe with a helmet, a lot of places, lone helmets, it doesn't even have to be a full weekend commitment. You can go out on a Wednesday night at tracks all over America, and for what, $100, $150, you you can go do You're it. You're on track, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, when we were kids, oh. it was hard. Remember, and I, I look at your driver's suit and your helmets on the wall, you had to have, you know, you had to place the order from Auto World or wherever it was yeah. to get the suit, to get the helmet, all certified. That all still exists. Uh, but yeah, it blows my mind how the ease of, of a track day is. Track days are great. Um, they offer good experience uh, if there's proper coaching and officiating and organization. I think, um, you know, uh, the competition though, you know, a track day is one thing, but wheel to wheel competition, understanding how to pass, how to be passed, um, understanding uh, uh, the rules and regulations of, of a proper race event. So. Track days are awesome, and we have so many people in the IMSA paddock that when they're not actually executing an IMSA weekend, they, they go organize track days. David Murray would be a good example. Yeah. Uh, tremendous guy, longtime IMSA and Grand Am history. Um, he does a great job. But I think that, that experience of wheel-to-wheel -wheel competition, go join SCCA, go through a driver's school, um, go compete in an event. There's so many entry-level classes now even, you know, Formula V is still an entry level class if you want open wheel racing. Um, Spec Miata, of course, on the, the uh, fendered side, Spec Racer, there's, there's a lot of entry level classes that you don't have to spend a fortune building your own car. You can go rent a car. Yeah, I was gonna car. say, that I would, a couple of things I would interject are, if you think you want to race, go rent a car. Yep. Go with somebody before you spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars on building or, or buying a race car. Absolutely. Go try it. Um, track days are a blast. Auto crossing is a lot of fun. That's another good way to get into all this. But you really want no, racing's not for everybody. No, it's a lot. It it's, is. It's a lot you know, more. It's a lot more than sitting on your couch. It's 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 a very real. It's not a video game. Yeah, I mean, I, I was at Road America at six weeks old. I watched for all those years. My first actual driver school was not until 1993 when you guys um, had let me write um, some articles and I watched it all those years and I remember the first time going down the front straightaway at Blackhawk Farms realizing I was going to have to break shift and get this thing woed down to get through turn one it's a lot more difficult than you think you know yeah. any of us can take an on-ramp you know a little <laughs> extra but to do it at those speeds, it's, and it's... Another thing we should talk about is driving and racing are two different skill sets. That's correct. You should not be learning how to drive your car as you're learning how to race. You, you should have your car and your driving figured out so that you're not guessing is what's going to happen next. Yeah. I feel pretty strongly about that. So autocross, then do track days, then get into racing. Yeah. But to... Uh, it's, it's a... 100%. And that's scary. another reason to rent a car, as you pointed out, because when you show up to the racetrack, you're not going to also be needing to wrench on the car uh, between sessions. Yeah. You can focus. allow the team do it to do it, and then you can focus on either reviewing data if the car has a data system, or actually the old-fashioned way that you and I used to look at a track map yeah. and, and draw our line yeah. or write down... You know, I need to shift at the the break at the two and shift at the one, or look you know, at our tires to see exactly, where we're at. or yeah. <laughs> you know, the old check your gauges on the straightaway or check your mirrors. Um, you know, the, the, let a team do that. You focus on getting yourself mentally and and also uh, in the right mindset for for the driving piece. Let's say you've you've been out of crossing, you've done track days, you've gone into wheel to wheel. And you wake up one morning and decide, you know, I should make a living at this. I should be a pro <laughs> racer. Do you know anything about that? 
Well, um, number one, I had the opportunity to watch my dad for years. Um, he was at that amateur level. He, he, that was his, his getaway from, from work and stress. And um, a few of the guys that he raced with decided to go pro, whether it was the IMSA RS series in the day or ultimately World Challenge or Pro Formula Mazda and those types of things, you know, which I was associated with. Um, it's not that easy. But it's, it's probably easier now than it's ever been. I, I think so. And, you know, guys like Robert Davis, Jim Jordan, myself had an opportunity to do something pretty historic for the sport with the Mazda Road to 24, uh, the Mazda Road to Indy, where we were providing scholarships for young talent. And it's really neat to see a lot of those drivers, men and women, in IMSA or in IndyCar or some of them, they've, they've, they've made it. Um, but it's expensive, right? So... Um, everyone thinks that all the drivers in the Rolex 24 are actually being paid. Um, quite, Some a, are <laughs> quite a few of them are signing, as we like to say in the office, the front of the check, um, not, <laughs> not, not cashing the check. So a lot of drivers are paying to be there, which is awesome. I mean, they've been successful business men and women. They've, they've made their way into being able to do it as their hobby still at the highest levels. There are factory opportunities. Um, to get paid and make a make a living at this sport, um, you need the seat time. You need to prove yourself not only in the car. Race wins. You know, I think there was this notion uh, that if I just win races in karting, or if I just win Spec Miata races, or if I win Formula Ford or Formula Atlantic races, Roger no, I, uh, Roger Penske yeah. is going to call. No, I'd rather sponsor you a, know a, a third place driver that's really good in. Yeah, and representing my brand is more important than, than absolutely. You know, so it needs to do reasonably well, but yeah, there's no question the marketing and the PR side of this, the fitness and nutrition side. You know, yeah, that's our, come a long our way drivers uh, are spending a lot of time with you know a, a company like Pit Fit in Indianapolis, Jim Jim Leo, full on training programs, specific diets. You know, we had a kind of like us, world class. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, but we had a, you know, we had a specific menu for our factory drivers in my, my previous life to make sure that you know, our chef knew exactly what the drivers needed, with, whether it was pasta or, or bland foods, you know, before or after a stint to replenish. It, it's, it's very important. Um, I think the other piece is now uh, social media and being sensitive to, you know, this is my passion. You know, I'm, I'm an up and comer. But boy, if you want to have that career, uh, you better be careful on what you're. Stay off the politics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and don't be, blame other people. Yeah, if you because don't win. you know, <laughs> if 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 Tim Tim Sutter calls me and he's looking for a ride, and what am I going to do? I'm going to probably Google Tim Sutter. I'm probably going to go to Tim Sutter. You don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to Tim Sutter's social channels and see what he's posted and things, and that's the. That was the whole concept of what we did back at Mazda was educate and, com and, and develop the complete package, yeah. both in and out of the car. And I think that's something for you know, young and up-and-comers who want to go pro. Now, there's some factory teams, there's drivers paying to have a car on track. And in those opportunities where you have a, a driver who doesn't make their living racing, they're a business owner, they're a silver or a bronze rated driver, there are opportunities that that bronze driver may want to hire that young up and comer. So you don't have to be a factory driver for Corvette racing or Cadillac or Acura. You could be paid by uh, someone who, who wants you as their teammate because you've been a good coach. Eventually with experience, some of the talent that wants to be a pro becomes a coach. And when you're at the track days coaching some folks that have the resources to drive their Ferrari or their Porsche or their Lamborghini or their AMG Mercedes at a track day, you might meet some people <laughs> that want to go pro racing. And a lot of the guys that have become pro uh, teammates with, with a, a gentleman or a, a female driver that's doing it as a passion, they've done it through coaching. So, yeah, I know a lot of race car drivers. A lot of them spend weekends at tracks, basically honing their own skills while helping others there so give us give us three four more tips for things you've seen be successful that to how to become a, a pro race driver i think one uh people think the incoming money of a sponsor is most important i think 
um, back to sort of the social media, the marketing side. I think there's opportunities with, with charities um, to tie them into the sport. You know, for years, a dear friend of mine, Don Kitch, has done a lot with Seattle Children's Hospital. Um, you know, uh, a gentleman that, that ran with James uh, for years. Um, you know, Phil uh, uh, did the End Alzheimer's program. And so to tie a charity into a racing effort, um, you know, you got to be sensitive. Someone says, well, why do I give you money to go racing? Is it all going to the charity? If you do it right and structure it right, I think it, it benefits the charity and it's a proper PR tool when you come into market to tell a story yeah. that you are making an impact. I think back to the idea of the next generation, uh, STEM education is incredibly important. What you guys have done in this shop and, and throughout the years and, and building engines, building cars, um, we need that next pipeline of talent that wants to do that, that are passionate car people that want to work on cars. And, you know, within the radius of, of where we're sitting right now, there's, what, 20, 30 elementary, junior high, high schools that are full of young kids that if they got the chance to come and, and learn about the tie-in between algebra class and building that Mustang next, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think we, we have to provide that platform for uh, teaching. And so those are some things you can, as a young driver, uh, do in your community to, to, uh, to make it happen. Um, in the end, it's about a circle of influence and um, whether it's, you know, friends of your parents or people that you work with or building that circle of people around you that can maybe be a corporate sponsor, maybe uh, uh, can direct you on the PR side and the public speaking and that type of thing. Uh, you got to end up using that circle of influence to, to try to help you get to, to the next level. So you know hundreds, maybe thousands of pro drivers. Yeah. How many of them gave up easily? Well, it's because it's very difficult. Yeah. And, you know, a couple, two, three bad races or a bad season, you can be on the outside looking in. Um, and so consistency, um, you know, guys... Don't, don't crash my car. Do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and I think, you know, you, you can try to prove yourself in a lot of different ways. And overdriving a car and ended up being hard on equipment, that's not the way to make it to the next level. Um, but I can think of some really great guys that I know have been part of uh, GRM over the years, a Randy Post, a, a, a Tom Long, um, who have had the opportunity to win grassroots championships, have gotten the opportunity to go pro, have done solo, have become coaches. Um, now Tom Long is, is obviously coaching, racing, and serves as a race steward for MX5 Cup. So there's these opportunities yep. across. Um, but he's at the track every weekend. Exactly. These, Randy Pope's is, every time I go to a race, there's Randy Pope's. Yeah. <laughs> he's still at it. And I think the last thing at the pro level, um, it's a lifestyle. You know, I did in my latter years in my previous job, you know, 38, 39 weekends. And it's Careful hard. what you wish for? Yeah, yeah, it's a dream come true, but it's hard on family life. It's hard on, um, on uh, keeping friends um, because you're never around and always at a racetrack. Now your, your racetrack family is, is, is important, yeah. um, but don't forget having a life away from the racetrack and, and how critical that is. Well, thank you very much for joining us again thank today. Thank you so much uh, for having always me. Always interesting to talk to Likewise. you. Likewise. I mean, you know, I've got a lot of experience, and I think you've got a ton more than I do, <laughs> I don't especially know about at, the, that. At, the, at the higher ends of it's, stuff. But, uh, it's all about, uh, you know, passion, of course, and it runs deep yeah. for you and your staff and, and all your, your listeners and your readers. But, you know, just um, take the opportunities when they come, and uh, I've, I've been blessed with so many at the right time, and met the right people and just tried to, to try to do it right over the years. And so I'm grateful and uh, really appreciate this opportunity. And uh, as you know, uh, still uh, subscribe to Grassroots and Classic <laughs> and, and uh, can't wait for the next issue. So. So if you like this kind of video, please like, subscribe and uh, go to our website, grassrootsmotorsports.com. We've got this kind of stuff all the time there. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.